Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks to the witnesses for being here. Mr. Mullen, let me start with you. Can you tell me, when were you at Facebook? Uh, I was there 2009 through uh, November 2020. November 2020. Was it, was it normal in, in your, the time that you were at Facebook for executives or team members at Facebook, not even have to be executives, to coordinate closely with the United States government? Uh, I'm not aware of that. You were never in any such meetings? No. You never had any contact with uh, U.S. government employees in your time at Facebook? Not that I can recall. Would you be surprised to know that on July 16th, 2021, a Facebook employee at Facebook wrote to the Department of Health and Human Services saying, I know our teams met today to better understand the scope of what the White House expects from us on misinformation going forward. On July 23rd, 2021, Facebook employee thanked HHS for taking the time to meet earlier today. Wanted to make sure you saw the steps we just took this past week to adjust policies and what we are removing with respect to misinformation. That included, I'm quoting, increasing the strength of our demotions for COVID and vaccine-related content. On April 16th, 2021, Rob Flaherty at the White House circulated a Zoom meeting invitation uh, stating White House staff will be briefed on vaccine disinfo, misinfo, sorry. On April 7th, 2021, a Facebook employee thanked the CDC for responding to misinformation queries. We'll get moving now to be able to remove all but that one claim as soon as the announcement and authorization happens. On July 28th, 2022, that's this year, Facebook employee reached out to CDC about doing a monthly misinfo slash debunking meeting. CDC responded, yes, we would love to do that. On May 11th, 2021, uh, Facebook employees organized a be on the lookout meeting with CDC officials. On July 20th, 2021, Clark Humphrey at the White House emailed Dave Sumner and others at Facebook asking any way we can get this pulled down and cited an Instagram account. Within 46 seconds, Facebook replied, quote, yep, we are on it, end quote, and down the account went. Is that normal? Is that normal in your time at Facebook? I don't have experience around that. So you have no knowledge of anything like this? Nothing like this ever happened, and then presto, it started happening just suddenly in 2020 as soon as you left? Uh, I didn't have personal experience of that, or I didn't hear And you don't know it. anything about it at all? You've never heard of anything like this happening ever? I, I don't. That's remarkable. I thought that you were the former vice president of partnerships, product marketing, partner engineering, marketing, strategic operations, and analytics at Facebook. It's true. And none of this ever happened. Why did it start happening, do you think, as soon as you left? What, what do you think drove this kind of collaboration where you have Facebook becoming an arm of the United States government, more specifically the White House, to censor private information, personal speech, at the behest of government officials? So it's hard for me to content on the, the specific context of, of the content we're talking about, whether it was public content or whether it was personal content. Um, I do know that, um, from what I've read, and the, the, probably the same documents that you have access to, that. Um, there were a lot of steps taken around uh, COVID response and COVID misinformation that um, may have presented a, a unique scenario and a unique situation where the company took, took steps to, to coordinate that way. Took steps to coordinate, by which you mean to censor the speech of ordinary Americans at the behest of the President of the United States and his administration. I commend to uh, everyone who's interested these emails, which were discovered as part of litigation led by the state of Missouri and other states as they're suing these tech companies, including your former employer, Mr. Boland, which for the record is one of the worst companies in America. And uh, they have, they've discovered this trove of information, extensive coordination, extensive between Facebook and the Biden administration, targeting the speech of ordinary Americans. And by the way, for standards that are ever shifting, ever shifting. You know, early on, if you questioned if the vaccine had anything to, I'm sorry, if you questioned that the COVID had anything to do with a lab, you were marked as disinformation, you were censored, only to have the President of the United States later admit that the, uh, the possibility that COVID has some lab nexus is in fact a very distinct possibility that our intelligence communities think is actually quite a viable theory. We've seen the same thing with people who have questions about masks, who have questions about vaccine efficacy. It's really quite remarkable. Let me just ask you this. What safeguards, when you were at Facebook, what safeguards were in place to protect Americans from having their speech censored or having government censors like this access personal information? 
Uh, so during my time there, the, the company was, was it, my experience with the company is more reluctant to take down speech and, and very um, careful about uh, trying to, to remove content. Um, I also don't think the company studied the, the content on the platform uh, as heavily as you would like. You know, think that they, so they didn't do things like they were not like what they were doing later when they were looking at particular private Instagram accounts and removing them at the behest of the White House. You're saying that didn't happen while you were there. That's not a scenario that that I ran across. I, you know, it, it's hard for me to to comment on on a, a COVID pandemic response, uh, which which I think a lot of things were outside of the norm. I'll just say this: I find it hard to believe, hard to believe, that suddenly Facebook became an entirely different entity and was interfacing with the United States government in an entirely different way only when COVID happened. I mean, maybe, but I doubt it. Um, let me ask you, Mr. Redder, is that how I pronounce your name, by the way? Redder, that's Redder, correct. Okay, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, you were an engineer at, at Twitter, is that right? Correct, yep. You were the senior vice president for engineering? Yes. So yesterday, Mr. Zatko testified to another committee I sit on that 4,000 engineers at Twitter had access to all of the personal information, user data, geolocations of Twitter users. Is that accurate? So he, I've never met him, and he joined the company after I left, so I don't know if that particular claim is accurate. But he said all the engineers, you were an engineer, did you have access um, to user data? When I was there, there uh, I don't know if it was all the engineers. Um, did you have access to user data? Well, I was the head of engineering for the whole company. Did you have access to user data? I'm looking for a yes or a no. Uh, just remind you. No. I, no. You didn't but have access I, I to user I data? I think I could have gotten it. I'm sorry? I think I could have gotten it. Oh, okay. Well, if you can get it, that, that's what we call access. So you did have access to user data. Is that a yes? Theory, I probably could have, yeah. Um, uh, sorry? That's probably right. Yeah, I probably could Okay, you did. Did, did you ever access any, any user data? No. Were you aware of Twitter engineers ever doxing uh, members of uh, users? Uh, no. Were you aware of Twitter engineers ever inserting, ever taking over an account and, and tweeting out or altering the content of that account? Mr. Zaxo said he thought that had happened. I w I'm not aware of that. 